Vanishing Act, Mystery at the U.S. Open by John Feinstein. A first chapter Friday read aloud with the word nerd. If you like reading books in the series, you're in luck because this one is a part of a great series of sports books called The Sports Beat by John Feinstein. Hi, my name is Amanda Zeva. Welcome to my channel, Learning with the Word Nerd, and another First Chapter Friday video. This week, I'm going to be reading to you the first chapter from a book called Vanishing Act, Mystery at the U.S. Open, written by John Feinstein. Now, earlier this year, uh, during March Madness, I read you the first uh, chapter from the first book in this series, The Last Shot. Now, this is not a series where you really have to read. Uh, the books in order, I actually read Vanishing Act before I knew it was a part of a series and I still understood it. Uh, but if you want to know the whole arc of Steve, Stevie and Susan Carroll's uh, journey as young sports writers and their relationship together, um, you're going to want to read them uh, in order. Uh, they go to all sorts of cool different places. Like I said, this one uh, takes place at the Final Four. This one's going to take place at the U.S. Open, but they have... Uh, in one of the books, they go to the World Series, and another they go to the Super Bowl, in another one they go to the uh, Army versus Navy football game, and then I think in the last one they go to the Olympics. So uh, if you love sports, if you love writing, this is an amazing series, super fun. Uh, let me tell you specifically what this one is about. When teen sports writers Stevie and Susan Carroll score press passes to the U.S. Open, they expect drama. They expect blistering serves, smashed returns, and fierce competition. What they don't expect is kidnapping. Russian tennis phenom Nadia Simonova was supposed to win it all, but she never even made it onto the court. Now the whole stadium is in an uproar trying to find her. Can Stevie and Susan Carroll get to Nadia before it's too late? Uh, a quote from the Chicago Sun-Times says, Feinstein expertly combines tennis action, life in the Big Apple, media coverage, and a realistic plot to explore the fierce competition of tennis. Uh, I absolutely love this book, and I think that you guys will too. So let's just dig right in. Chapter number one is called, I'm from SC Devil. Stevie Thomas knew he needed a shower, but as usual, he couldn't resist sitting down at his desk to see if any of his friends had emailed while he had just been out playing golf with his dad. It was a hot, humid August day, and walking 18 holes had worn him out. You aren't even 14 yet, his dad had said as Stevie slowly climbed the last hill on the 18th hole at Bluebell County Club, Country Club. You aren't supposed to get tired. Stevie would be 14 in September, but he was tired. He had played pretty well. Breaking 90 always made him happy, but a hot shower and a nap before dinner was all he wanted right now. First, though, he would check his emails. He signed onto his computer, his sign-on was Kid Writer, and had begun trolling through the spam and notes from friends when he heard a ringing sound that told him he had an instant message coming in. When he saw who it was from, he smiled. What are you up to? was the opening question from SC Devil. Just played golf with my dad, answered. Da with my dad, he answered. Too hot. The response came back almost before he sent his reply. It's a balmy 99 here. Heat index much worse than that. See if you could imagine what it was like in Greensboro, North Carolina, given how hot it was in Philadelphia. What are you doing, he asked. Susan Carol Anderson, a.k.a. SC Devil, because she was a fanatic fan of Duke, a basketball team Stevie had only recently learned not to hate, was a month younger than Stevie, but at least the last time he had seen her in April, a good four inches taller and much older looking, too. Still, not long after they had met in New Orleans during the Final Four, Stevie had conceded to himself that he had a crush on her. He told no one, not even his dad, in part because she was too tall for him, in part because he wasn't going to admit he had a crush on anyone at this point in his life. Stevie and Susan Carroll had been the winners of a writing contest that had earned them each a trip to the Final Four, complete with press credentials. It was the most unbelievable thing that had ever happened to Stevie. Literally. Soon after arriving, they had stumbled across a plot to blackmail Chip Grabber, Minnesota State star point guard, to throw the national championship game. They had managed... I'm actually going to skip this part because I don't want to ruin the story for you. If you want to read the last shot, go check it out. Give me just a second where I find where I can skip the spoilers. Here we go. Stevie and Susan Carroll had gotten a lot of media attention for their involvement, what his father called their 15 minutes of fame. They even got to go on Letterman together. That was the last time he had seen her, but he and Susan Carroll I am'd all the time. 
Now she was typing a long answer to his question about what she was doing, and Stevie could almost see her smiling at him through the computer screen. Really exciting news, she said. I convinced the sports ed at the Fayetteville paper to credential me to go to the U.S. Open next week. School doesn't start until a week after, and Mom and Dad said I can stay with my uncle in Manhattan. Stevie stared at the screen, instantly envious of the instant message. He knew Susan Carroll loved tennis almost as much as she loved basketball. He was more into golf than tennis, but he did follow it, even though his father insisted the game hadn't been the same since the retirements of John McEnroe and Jimmy Connors. He was too young to remember either of them as players, but he thought McEnroe was good on television. His favorite tennis player by far was Nadia Simonova. He had a poster of her hanging over his bed to prove it. She was another in the recent line of gorgeous Russian players, following in the footsteps of Anna Kornikova and Maria Sharapova, among others, who had shot up in the world rankings. She was 16 and had been the talk of Wimbledon after getting into the semifinals, only to lose in three sets to Venus Williams. Stevie did not have a crush on Simonova. That would have implied that he knew her or might somehow have a chance to someday even meet her. What's more, if Susan Carroll was too tall for him at 5'8", then what was Simonova who was 6 feet tall? Besides, every time Stevie picked up a magazine, he saw Simonova walking into or out of a party with some movie star or famous young athlete. Now Susan Carroll was going to get to go to New York and see Simonova and the rest of the U.S. Open from up close. Great news, he finally typed. He thought for a second and then added, I'm jealous. Susan Carroll's answer came flying back. You should go too. He was baffled by that one. How? He answered. Easy. Write to Kelleher. I still have his email if you don't. Ask him to help you get a credential. You can help him or something. He knows everyone. It wasn't a bad idea. Bobby Kelleher was a columnist for the Washington Herald who had helped Stevie and Susan Carroll immensely in New Orleans. The chances were good that he would be covering the Open. Worth a shot, he wrote back. What's his email? She sent it to him. He actually knew what that meant. She sent it to him, uvao.9 at aol.com. He actually knew what that meant because Kelleher had told him when he played basketball at the University of Virginia, his career scoring average had been 0.9 points per game. I'll let you know, he said. Tell your parents you can stay with me at my uncle's apartment, she wrote back. He's divorced, so he has lots of room. Another good idea. His parents certainly wouldn't let him go to New York for a week and stay in a hotel alone. And he knew neither of his parents could take a week off of work since they had just gotten back from vacationing at the beach. Staying in Susan Carroll's uncle's apartment had one other benefit. He would get to spend more time with her. He just hoped she hadn't gotten any taller. Stevie sent the email to Kelleher asking him to write him back whenever he got a chance. The open started in five days. He was afraid he might be asking too late. A couple of hours later, he was sitting on the family room couch watching his favorite TV show, Daily News Live. The show aired on weekdays and featured Michael Barkin and three sports writers, different ones each day from the Philadelphia News. Stevie liked the show for two reasons. First, the Daily News guys always had opinions and were very willing to share them, even to the point of occasionally shouting at guests while asking them questions. Second, he knew several of the show's regulars. Dick, Gir Dick Girardi had been the first reporter to help him out when he had been trying to go to local sporting events and learning about journalism. Through Girardi, he had met writers he had read locally for years, including the deans of Philadelphia sports journalism, Bill Conlin and Stan Hochman of the Daily News, and Bill Lyon of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Girardi had even invited him to sit on the set during the show once and introduced him to Barkin. Conlin and Girardi were having a heated debate about whether or not baseball players who use steroids should be in the Hall of Fame when Stevie's mom walked into the living room carrying the phone. He'd been so caught up in the show he hadn't heard it ring. It's Bobby Kelleher, she said. Surprised, Stevie took the phone. Let me guess, Kelleher said without saying hello. Susan Carroll figure out a way to get to the open and you want to come too. Stevie felt his face flush. How did you know that? I remember how my mind worked when I was a teenager, Kelleher said. Actually, it was her idea that I contact you, Stevie said. I didn't know you had my phone number. You gave it to me in New Orleans, remember? Anyway, she's a smart girl. Not only can I get you in, but I'd be happy to have you come up and give me some help the first week. Wow, Stevie said, forgetting for an instant that he was trying very hard to remove that word from his vocabulary. You sure you can do that? Easy, Kelleher said. The guy who runs a public re relations from USTA is an old friend, Ed Fabricus. In fact, he's a Philly guy, worked at Penn for years. I'll bet he knows just who you are. It won't be a problem at all. My guess is Fab's only condition will be that he gets to meet you guys. 
Stevie had been amazed after the Letterman appearance how often people recognized him. He had become an instant celebrity in school. Even Andrea Fassler, the 8th grade girl every 8th grade boy wanted to go out with, had started being friendly to him. But a lot of that had faded with time. And he heard himself laughing at the notion that the USTA's public relations honcho would want to meet him. Well, if you can really get me in, he said. Consider it done, Kelleher said. I'll send you an email with my cell phone number and all the details, since my guess is you're watching Daily News Live right now and you don't even have a pen. How'd you know? Because whenever I'm in Philly, I watch it too. I'll see you Monday. Stevie's mom walked back in, a quizzical look on her face. Why was Bobby Kelleher calling you? She asked. Stevie hadn't said anything about the possibility of going to New York. He figured there wasn't any point until he heard back from Kelleher. Now he told his mother what was going on. Did you discuss this with your father? She asked. No, he said. It, after we, it happened after we played golf and he'd already gone back to the office. She sighed. Well, I'm sure he'll say yes because he loves the idea of you becoming a sports writer and this would be an adventure, she said. I think you'll want to check in with Susan Carroll's dad and make sure it really is okay for you to stay with her uncle. I think a grown-up should invite you, not Susan Carroll. Stevie rolled his eyes a little, but he knew he was in good shape if the only thing standing between him and the trip to New York was a call from his dad to Susan Carroll's dad. He had been to New York before, but it had been mostly to do sightseeing. Statue of Liberty, Empire State Building, several of the museums, and just a few months before 9-11, the family had eaten dinner at Windows on the World atop the World Trade Center. He still shuddered a little when he thought about that. But he'd never gotten to see any sports in New York. The timing was always wrong. His mom had always taken the position that since he went to sports events all the time in Philadelphia, he should do more cultural things while they were in New York. He didn't mind all culture. The Lion King had actually been kind of cool, but he certainly could have lived without the museums. Now he'd be going to New York and there would be no culture to deal with, just covering tennis while hanging out with Susan Carroll. Maybe, he thought, he'd get to meet Nadia Simonova. Now that would be cultural. If you want to find out what happens to Stevie and Susan Carroll when they get to the U.S. Open and maybe what happens to them as they do all these other amazing sporting events and the rest of the series, you should totally pick up a copy. Grab it from your school library, maybe purchase one from a local indie bookstore that you love, and if you can't find them there, you can always find them linked in the description box below. Thanks so much for coming to listen, and I hope to see you here again for another First Chapter Friday video. Happy reading! You guys know the drill by now. If you want to continue reading John Feinstein's Vanishing Act, pick up a copy from your school library, purchase one from a local indie bookstore, or grab it via the link in the description box. And don't forget to pick up the rest of the series as well. Then, as always, there's more waiting for you on my full channel playlist. Over 80 middle grade and YA stories ready for you to read and listen to. Thanks for listening, subscribe, like this video, and check out all the other word nerd goodness I have for you online. Happy reading!